We are doing the empirical formulas lab and the equipment that you need for this is a ring stand, some t uh, crucible tongs, a ring support which will go onto the ring stand, okay, a clay triangle, um, you're going to need a wire gauze and a ceramic fab which we're going to use like a hot trivet. Um, we're also going to need a crucible and uh, the crucible cover. Now the crucible and the crucible cover here, let's put this on our, when it's in case when it's hot. You need to practice with your beaker, uh, your, the crucible tongs about taking off the lid, taking the crucible, so the crucible fits inside this area here taking the crucible and being able to move it up to our clay triangle and off the clay triangle. Okay? So you want to be able to move it up and off. And then the lid will go on and so forth. Okay? We will also need a Bunsen burner because that's how we're going to we're going to heat our crucible and of course a striker to light the uh, the Bunsen burner. So this is this will be our setup where we'll have the Bunsen burner on the ring stand on the base of the ring stand. You have your ring support and the clay triangle, and then that's how um, our setup is. And then we're going to put our crucible with our lid on top, and that will be our setup to um, heat our magnesium in the presence of oxygen. One of the things that we first need to do is clean our crucible. We're going to heat it to a high temperature to burn off all the oils and, and impurities that could be on the crucible itself. So one of the things that you're going to want to do is of course um, heat up your Bunsen, uh, heat up the crucible, turn on the Bunsen burner, turn on the gas, turn the needle valve so you can hear the gas. And, let, and light it. Open up the air vents to get a nice hot flame. You want the tip of the, 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 the part that's really hot in this flame is right here, the tip of the blue part. And that's what you want to be about a centimeter or so down from the top of your um, crucible. And you're going to let it heat. So it should be, it, it, you're going to fire it really hot to so try to burn off all of those impurities. And when it gets hot enough, you should see the bottom of the crucible start to glow. That might take a few minutes. Okay, so we're burning off the crucible. All the impurities are coming off. I want to have you look at the bottom of the crucible itself. See how the bottom of the crucible is starting to have a reddish glow to it? That means it's getting really hot. Okay? One of the things that you want to do before you actually fire the crucible is check the crucible for any cracks because um, it can um, break if there are cracks or impurities in your, or imperfections in your crucible itself. But look, at, look at the bottom of the crucible, how red it's glowing. You want to do that for about five minutes. And after five minutes, All right. After five minutes, you will turn off the Bunsen burner, bring your ceramic fab and wire gauze closer, use your crucible tongs, take off the lid carefully, take off the crucible, carefully lower this crucible down 
onto our wire gauze and let it cool. And you're going to cool for uh, to room temperature for about 10 minutes. Once the crucible is cool, we need to get the mass of the empty crucible. And in order to make sure we uh, get the mass of the empty crucible, we need to be able to carry it. And to carry it safely, I want to carry the crucible. I'm going to keep the lid off onto the wire mesh. And I'm always going to have, at all times, I'm going to have the crucible tongs hanging onto my crucible in the, and have the wire mesh underneath so that when we carry this, when we move it around, it is stabilized. You don't want to you, you don't want to put the lid on and try to carry it this way. For when it's top heavy, it will fall, and then you have to start the experiment over. So you want to do that. So when you carry this to uh, the balance room, the weigh room, you want to hold on to your crucible, have the lid off to the side, and carry it on the wire mesh. To prepare the magnesium sample, we want some magnesium ribbon. We're going to pull a sample of magnesium ribbon out from our jar. And um, the magnesium ribbon that you see here, it has some, it could have some dark lines on it. And that's because uh, magnesium does react with oxygen in the air at room temperature, but it's very slow. So we want to take all this oxide layer off, this black layer off. Okay? So in order to do that, you take some sandpaper. Do not sand right on the bench because that will scratch up the bench. Make sure you use a piece of cardboard. And then just sand your, your sample until it's nice and shiny. Trying to get as much of the black oxide off as you can. Okay? All right, so once you got all the black oxide off, it's all nice and shiny. We're going to want to put it into our crucible. Now remember, the crucible, we cannot touch the crucible with our hands anymore. So we can only use um, our crucible tongs uh, to do this. But we need to be able to stick our magnesium in here uh, where it, it's all sides of that magnesium is exposed to the metal, uh, to the air. The, the magnesium is the metal. You want to expose it to the air. So what we need to do is we need to coil our ribbon. So we're going to coil this around. So I'm going to try to do this for you on my screen here. You just need to twist it like a spring. So we're going to try to coil it. Oops. So we need to twist it like a spring. We're going to try to coil it around. Because we want it to be able to fit inside the crucible. And this is good. Because here now, you can see that every edge of that uh, metal is exposed to the, can be exposed to the air. And that will fit nicely into the crucible. Okay? Once we have the metal uh, sample ready, take your crucible with the magnesium in there. Sorry for my hand there. Magnesium. Again, I can't touch anything with my fingers because the oil on your fingers will affect the results. So get ready to m take this to the balance room. Make sure you carry your sample securely. Bring it to the balance room and get the mass of the lid, the crucible, and the magnesium sample. After you get the mass, we will get ready to fire it. After we've gotten the mass of our crucible, magnesium sample, and lid, we're going to want to um, heat up our sample. And in order to do that, we want to first start heating it coolly. So remember the iron ring, iron hot or cold looks the same. So I wouldn't ever touch the iron ring with your hand. You can touch the screw on the edge here. That's still going to be cool. But use your crucible tongs to grab the edge of the iron ring and raise it up a little bit. Because we want to first heat it gently. We don't want to get it too hot right off the bat. So um, once we have the, uh, the ring support uh, higher um, on the ring stand, take the 
crucible and stick it onto our wire triangle. Put on the lid. Okay, so it's all nice and um, on the crucible itself. Now we need to, now we're going to need to heat up our Bunsen burner to light it up. So when we light up our Bunsen burner, don't try to light it underneath the crucible. You're going to hit it out and it's going to go everywhere. Move the Bunsen burner off of the ring support base. Turn on the gas. And then I'm going to make a cooler flame. So a cooler flame, we want to have less air. I also want to lower this a bit. So remember the needle valve controls how much the height of the flame and the hotness of the flame is controlled by the oxygen. So this cooler flame, I'm going to start um, put that underneath my crucible and I'm going to heat up my sample. I'm going to heat it for a good couple of minutes. Again, gradually I want it to get hotter. So eventually I could either do it one of two ways. If you feel comfortable, you can take the crucible, the, your tongs, and lower the ring a little bit. To make that flame hotter, you could also increase the oxygen. You want the crucible to be about a centimeter or two above this light blue part so it can get really hot. Now every few minutes you're going to um, try to get it hotter so I might add more oxygen to get a hotter flame. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that there's enough oxygen getting to the reaction. We have a lid so we're limiting the number of the amount of oxygen that's getting to the magnesium. So periodically you're going to want to lift the lid. Notice how I did it very little and fast. Not like super fast, I'm gonna, but I just take off the lid and then put it back on. I just want to get some oxygen in there. Heat it for a few more minutes. I'm not going like, to make you watch a few more minutes. Uh, again, I want it hot. I'm gradually going to get it hot. So you, do you remember how we had the bottom of the crucible uh, turn bright red? You're going to want to end up getting that again eventually. Again, every few minutes, go ahead and lift the lid. If it's smoking, you don't want it to catch fire, put the lid right back on. It's heating up. Again, I want, I'm going to eventually want to get it really hot. That's probably a good, good height right there. And eventually the bottom of the crucible is going to get red. And periodically I'm going to lift the lid off of the crucible. Get more oxygen in there. A lot of this is patience. You're going to heat it up. It might start smoking. And after a while, you will see no reaction. Be aware when you're a, a scientist, you're looking at observation. So observe what does the magnesium look like before you heat it. And then we're heating it with oxygen. We're doing a combination reaction. So we're combining magnesium with the oxygen. What does the new compound look like? Does it have what are the different properties it has than the magnesium alone or the oxygen alone? Okay, so periodically lift the lid. Starting to heat up. It's definitely glowing red, but I don't see any reaction occurring yet. You will see it start to smoke a little bit like that. When it starts to smoke, I'm going to just lift the lid a little bit and put it right back down. I'm not even going to take it way off. But I do need to have some oxygen in there. Okay? So when it's done smoking, I'm, I'm 
which is, mine is not. Mine's still reacting. It'll take a little bit. When it is completely done, you'll be able to take off the lid and let it heat at this temperature for 30 seconds and you should see no smoke. All right, I'm not gonna spoil the fun. This is what um, we will be doing when it's completely done, which mine is not, but when yours is completely done, You'll be taking the lid off of the crucible and you'll put everything onto the wire gauze to let it cool. All right. Let it cool. Um, so take the lid off, take your crucible off, let it cool for a good 12, 15, 12 15 minutes like this because you want it cool you do not want it hot you can't touch it with your fingers but you can put your fingers close you can see how much heat is radiating off of the um, crucible itself and once it's And once it is cool, you can measure the mass of your crucible with the lid and your new compound. After you get that mass, you're going to heat it one more time. Actually, two more, maybe two, but at least one more time. Put the lid back on. Heat it hot for five minutes. Take your lid back off. Take this container off and you're going to heat it for another uh sorry you're going to let it cool for another you know 12 to 15 minutes once it is cool look at your two masses get the mass of this uh second heating or yeah second heating at, of the sample your crucible and lid and look at the difference of the two masses between the first and second heating if the difference between the two masses are less than 0 0.005 grams, you are done. What we're trying to do is get the constant mass where the mass does not change. If your mass is greater than 0 0.005 grams, you will have to heat it a third time. And um, if you do this carefully, hopefully you will not have to heat it a third time again. Put it up here with the lid. All right. Please ask any questions you have in class so that you do this experiment properly. Um, it's a fun experiment. It's a great uh, observation. It's a cool, uh, cool reaction.